If you clicked on this video, I'm really curious if you clicked because of the USA sticker. Well, I didn't plan that video, but because the elections are over now, I thought maybe it's okay to publish something that is related to the current time with something that I found at the scrapyard. Today is 4th of November, one day before the results are in. So when you watch this video, you have a new president. So congratulations to all my viewers from America. I hope that we can all move on now for the next couple of years and leave this behind us. But nevertheless, let's have a look at this motherboard. This is a Socket 2 board with a Cyrex coprocessor. I have no idea yet why it seemingly can combine a 486 with a 386 coprocessor. This is something I haven't seen before. It also has a very interesting mechanism. I didn't try this before, but I think this is like a lever. I don't want to break it. This old plastic sometimes is very fragile. There we go. Look at this lever. I have never seen something like this. Of course, it's completely dusty. And we can also see that there is a small botch wire going from one of those resistors to a solder point here. And I'm full of dust. So yeah, this is sometimes how these things look like. Of course, I removed the dust from the Cyrix and from the Made in USA, manufactured for Alaris, Al Alaris by IBM. So there you go. I have no idea what's under that sticker and I do not remove it. <laughs> so this will stay there forever. Yeah, so this is an interesting board. It uh, has a real-time clock here that's socketed, so this one is for sure empty, but there is a socket, so this should be possible to replace easily. Otherwise, we have only ISA slots, we have 72-pin SIM sockets, well, and the usual. The good thing is this board will not suffer from any corrosion because there is no battery on it. Well, it doesn't suffer from corrosion that was caused by a leaky battery, but who knows. And this is more or less all I can say about this board. Maybe here is a model number. I'm not sure if this will clarify what board this is. But yeah, this is, I think, all we can see here at the moment. That's the keyboard controller here. I found this board in a case. I just see that there's also an Adaptic chip here. So what could that be for? Is it for the IDE interface? Hmm. And well, uh, <gasps> oh, I didn't see this. Who knows what this is? Wow, that's interesting. MR BIOS. I didn't see this, but it definitely is an interesting board. So yes, uh, this board will be on my channel very soon. I will obviously clean it and hopefully bring it back into a very nice shape. And then we'll see what type of chips this board supports. Okay, let's move on to maybe two more boards. I'm not planning on making this a very long video. I want to finish this video with a few clips that I took at the scrapyard. Basically, I want to show more footage of the adventures that I go through when I visit my local scrapyard. But yeah, so this is something that is a very interesting find during my last tour. Next up is a 386 board, which does suffer from very bad corrosion. As you can see here, I probably have to replace this power connector completely. This is most likely not recoverable. The back of the board doesn't look that bad. Maybe we have a chance here. I, I really almost left that board there, but... Well, it's a 386, an AMD 386SX, SXL33. 
It has a cool processor spot here, I believe. 387. It has a Biotech 82C3860, which has a date code of 9252. So this is made in 93 almost. This looks very interesting. I did a little bit of research on this chipset, and apparently this is most likely a rebranded Opti chipset, or I think there were a few other chipset makers mentioned. Otherwise, um, we have an AMI BIOS. We have the keyboard BIOS. Huh, interesting. Both AMI branded, and then this one here should be the real-time clock. I think this might be similar to the one that I have on my 286 board. Maybe I would have to check. But yeah, you can see the corrosion everywhere here. So yeah, this battery has to come off as quickly as possible, which I will do right now. So let's go a little bit closer and add a little bit flux on the battery terminals. And let's see if we can get that battery out. Okay. There we go. Okay. I don't think we'll see much. That battery doesn't look too bad, but all the dust and dirt. Yeah, that's very interesting. It doesn't look too bad, but somehow these batteries transport their corrosion to the nearby area. As you can see here, it looks almost like where the dust goes from dry to a little bit wet. It's, it's a weird look on that board. And this is the 386 board, which also should be on my channel very soon because, well, it definitely needs some help and we want to avoid more damage that is caused by the corrosion on this board. So let's move on to two more boards that I found last time. They are maybe a little bit interesting. And then I will show you the clips of the scrapyard. Now, this one here is a socket seven board socket 7. Um, it maybe is not something very interesting, but it is a super socket 7. It supports high bus speeds, as you can maybe see here. So you can see we go from 66, 75, 83, 95, 100, 112, 124, and even 133 megahertz. So that may be interesting. Of course, I'm pretty sure there will be some conflicts with the AGP bus, most likely, that we're overclocking everything in that system. We'll see. Maybe an interesting board to test a AMD K6 2 Plus or 3 Plus. So this is a Super Socket 7 board. And finally, we have a Gigabyte 7iXe. This is a, well, it's written here, slot A. So I got a slot A with AMD chipset. I think the entire combination was called Iron Gate. It has the North Bridge and the South Bridge models, I think 751 and 756, if I'm not mistaken. And apparently this is a really good board, a well-rounded board, let's say. And I do have some classic Athlon CPUs. So that may be something very interesting to look at in the future. And this is all I have for you today. This is an out of order video anyway. Now I will show you some clips of the scrapyard and I will see you very soon. I'm off now for two weeks, but I was working tirelessly to make sure that I can publish a video every week. So thanks for watching. I hope you are looking forward to the new toys that I found. Let me know which one are you maybe more interested to see first. And then I will see you very soon in one of my future videos. Take care and bye bye.